And that gives me a great uh, chance to introduce our guest speaker tonight, which is Brian Halligan, who pretty much defined this whole term of inbound marketing. So welcome, Brian. Happy to have you with us. How's everybody doing? Everybody stand up. I have ADD, and I'm like a caged lion over there. Put your hands over your head. Okay, stick your right out and do a little shake. <laughs> Left out, do a little shake. Sit back down. Nice job. Nice job, team. Okay, who's heard of HubSpot? Okay, cool. Uh, so we got a crowd that sort of gets it. So this, this idea of inbound marketing, I, I really like this idea a lot. It's a new type of marketing. And um, there's sort of two observations behind it. And the first one's driven, dri driven um, here. Anyone know who this handsome guy is on the left? Famous guy. Come on, you're Harvard Business School here. That's my dad. <laughs> and that's me on the right. And if I just, I just the, the, the first observation that, that led me to this idea of inbound marketing is just this radical transformation in how humans live and shop and learn. There's been this, ta uh, this sort of tear in the fabric of the universe around the way work happens. The way we all live and shop and learn has radically changed. And I think that the difference is shown with my dad. I think about my dad, he got a lot of mail. Every night he'd come home at six o'clock, I'd sit next to him on the bench and he would have the scotch and water and have a little cheese with, you know, with crackers and he would open like all this mail and read it. I never open my, do you guys ever open your mail? There's never anything in there that's useful. He, he, we got seven TV stations, channel two, channel four, five, seven, 38, 56. And if you get the rabbit ears just right, you can get channel 68. Um, and he talked on the phone a lot and just very different from all of us. You know, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Facebook, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on Gmail. It's just a radically different way I work and live and shop and learn. Uh, so that's sort of my first observation I sort of came up with. My, my second observation is that the playbook that marketers use, almost all marketers use this, um, is pretty common. I, I, and the playbook is we're going to buy a list of email addresses and we're going you know, to bang people over the head in email. We're going to hire a bunch of young and hungry telesales reps and we're going to cold call people. We're going to spend a bunch of money on uh, advertising on Google AdWords or whatever it would be. We're going to hire a PR firm to interrupt journalists. Uh, we're going to do TV ads. We're going to do radio ads. That's sort of the marketing playbook. And that playbook worked great for my whole career. I sort of built my career on that. I call it the outbound marketing playbook. There's only one problem with that playbook. What's the problem? What's the problem? What's the problem? With that, with that playbook. I mean, it's the opposite of what you guys do. I know, but what's the problem? <laughs> You're reaching a lot of people who don't want to hear your message. People are sick and tired of being marketed to, and they're sick and tired of being sold to, and they get really good at blocking it out, whether that's a DVR at home, or it's caller ID on your phone blocking the goddamn sales reps out. Um, whether it's um, you've got uh, you, you, you've got ad blocker software now that'll block out the Google AdWords that doesn't work as well. You've got uh, spam protection software and you've got uh, priority inbox with your Gmail. It's nearly impossible to reach somebody with the traditional marketing playbook today. You need to take that everything you learned in your marketing class here at HBS, throw it away. Doesn't work anymore. Completely rethink marketing to match the way humans actually shop and learn today. And that's what I call uh, inbound marketing versus outbound marketing. So if you start a new company, do it with inbound, don't do it with outbound. Now, there's a couple things I really like about this inbound approach versus the traditional outbound approach. With inbound, your success is much more about the width of your brain than it is about the, width, uh, about the uh, width of your wallet. Big companies have a, lot, have a big, thick wallet and a really thin brain. Small companies have big brain, thin wallet. Inbound marketing is great for small businesses. So you people at HBS, I heard, I'm a Sloan guy, but I heard a rumor the HBS people have big brains. And so you guys should be all over this inbound marketing discuss because your success is much more about the width of your brain than the width of your wallet. You don't really need any money to be successful with inbound marketing. Second thing I like about inbound marketing is the way it scales. So let me, let me walk through how I think most venture-backed startup marketing departments work. Here's how it works. Everybody ready? You get your pile of, pile of venture capital. It's a pile. Sequoia Capital, they put all the venture in. And the marketing guy's like, great. Here's my plan. I got my shovel. Hold on. <laughs> shovel. 
And over here on the left, that, that's Google AdWords, uh, but it, it's really a furnace. So I got my shovel. And I shunk, I get all the money, and I throw it into Google's mouth. And Google grows like crazy, but you're stuck, and you can't grow, and it's really hard to get the math work with AdWords. And this is how a lot of startups try to get the math work. It's AdWords and uh, Facebook ads. Just darn hard to make it work. If you get it to work, you put a dollar in the machine, you get like a dollar ten out of the machine. Really hard to get that math work. The way inbound marketing works is very different. Let's just say, let's just say you're the CEO of Ford Motor Company. And if you're CEO of Ford Motor Company, you've got assets on your balance sheet. What are some of the assets on your balance sheet? Ford Motor Company, assets on the balance sheet. Factories, inventory, cash, thank you, David, you're a very good student, um, things like that. Now, let's say you're VP of marketing or you're the founder of a startup. What are the marketing assets you've got? The vision. That's crap. Hard, tangible asset on your balance sheet if you're a marketer. Perspective. That's horseshit. Time, horseshit. Come on. Okay, let me, get, let me give you a hint. Links into your website. What's another one? HBS. Twitter handle. What? Is, what? Like a Twitter handle. Twitter followers. Is that what you said? Brilliant. What else? Facebook fans, number of keywords you rank for in Google, number of uh, pages on your website. Those are hard, tangible, modern marketing assets on your marketing balance sheet. And what happens is you create an asset today, create a piece of content today, and it's, a, it's an asset that lasts forever and scales forever. It, it, it pulls in customers and it lasts forever and, and, it, and, and it pulls in customers essentially forever. So it's not like you're renting that asset. You own, you own this asset. You're not renting space on Google. You're not renting space in some list. You're not renting space on Facebook. You're creating your own marketing assets to become magnets that pull customers in. People with me? That's with me? Cool. Okay, the other thing I like about inbound marketing versus outbound marketing is people hate outbound marketing. Does anyone like getting called at home at 6 o'clock? Does anyone like getting spam? Anyone like those television ads? Sucks. Inbound marketing is great. You create all this content, and it's rich content, and it's informative, and it pulls people in, and it's engaging. So people fall in love with your brand like they fall in love with Patagonia, or they fall in love with Apple, or they fall in love with Whole Foods, these brands that people love. That's what you want to create a lovable, modern brand. People are really sick of this traditional marketing. Okay. And so how do you do inbound marketing? Well, we've got a couple minutes here, so I'm going to talk about part of it. The first thing you need to do as an inbound marketer is, is to create tons of content. The idea is you got to turn your website into a modern magnet by creating tons of remarkable content. Blog articles, genius, brilliant blog articles, um, ebooks, webinars, things like that. And if your blog article is good or your webinar is good or your ebook is good, it'll pull people in. And the better it is, the more retweets it'll get, the more Facebook likes it'll get, the more links it'll get, the longer it will sustain, the more leads it'll pull in. And it'll be really, really awesome. So the key to being a modern genius marketer, creating tons and tons of remarkable content. You market, you market today, think of yourself like Disney or Fox or CNN, like you're a production studio. So think of yourself like a production studio turn your brains into customers. What's this? Who said that? You said that. What's your name? Viva, you're a goddamn genius. <laughs> that is the internet. What are the dots? Pages. Customers. They're pages. They're, we they're websites, OK? And the big white ones are big websites. What are, what, are the, what are the lines between the pages? Links. The more, the more links you have, the more visitors you'll get, the more authority you get, the more mojo you get. And the way I kind of think about it is links are to the internet as dollars and cents are to the economy. How do you get a lot of links into your website? Good content. Brilliant content. What's your name? Genius. Bill's a genius. Remarkable content. Here's, what you, here's what's going to happen. You're going to start your company, and your website's going to be like Cambridge, Massachusetts, right? It's like Cambridge, Mass. How many, how many airports in Cambridge? Zero. How many, how many like bus stations, real ones? None. Train stations. Highways. Eh, a couple, two highways. You want to turn your website 
from Cambridge, Massachusetts to New York City. How many, how many airports in New York City? Yeah, two, three whoppers, train stations. Yeah, you got Penn State, a lot of big train stations. How many bus stations? The bus stations are Twitter, the train stations are Facebook, uh, the airports are LinkedIn, the highways are links from other websites. So to be a remarkable, modern, great marketing people love that scales, you have to be able to create a lot of content. Anyone know what this is? <laughs> this, I used to live in Japan. This is the Imperial Palace in Japan. And I took this, this picture because it reminds me of my favorite philosopher. My favorite philosopher is a guy named Warren Buffett. <laughs> what Warren Buffett says to his CEOs is you want to build a moat around your business. You want to build barrier to entry, uh, barriers around your business, like Michael was talking about. And the modern moat around your business, the way he says it, I really like. It's like you want to make the moat, make it really wide, make it cold, and put sharks in and alligators and wider and colder. I think the modern moat around your business, I totally agree with Michael, isn't a patent, isn't a trademark. It's this inbound marketing stuff. How many links into your site? How's that growing? How many keywords are you ranking for? How many Facebook fans? How many LinkedIn fans? How are you getting them converting down the funnel? That stuff's really hard to replicate. And it reminds me of a company that I really like uh, called Zappos. Um, when I think of Zappos, let's just say I wanted to start a company to compete with Zappos. And I was going to, you and I were going to start it. We're going to start it. We're going to, what's your name? Atavik. We're going to bury them. You and I were going to bury them. We could, we could figure out a lot. We could get the, a good looking website and hire a designer. We can even get their funky culture right. We can get the inventory, we can get the supply chain. The thing that's a bear for us to compete with is Tony Shea, the CEO, he's got six million Twitter followers. Their website's got 500,000 links into it. They're, they have five million keywords they rank for. That's a nearly insurmountable competitive advantage for the two of us to compete with. That's what I wish for you, an insurmountable competitive advantage. Go for inbound marketing really works. I don't know about you, but I feel like I need to rush out and buy something that he's selling. <laughs> Whatever it was, I'm buying. I'm in. <laughs> uh, too late, I think. I think a smarter brother got there earlier. Oh, wait. wait. If you want to learn more, the inbound marketing book, you can check out. Or go to HubspotMarketingGrader.com. You put your URL in there, and it will give you a grade of 1 to 100 on how good or bad you are at this stuff. <coughs> and then if you like this stuff, I teach a class at Sloan on it. It's a half semester class. You could cross register for it, that's you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.